I'm Amelia Singer, an international wine communicator, educator, and television presenter. Now, if you've ever visited a vineyard or seen a picture of one, you might imagine that vines naturally grow in neat, self-contained rows, a bit like the ones behind me. But a wild grapevine left to its own devices would twist and turn its way up the nearest tree, using its tendrils to grab onto anything it can until it finally breaks through into the light. However, this long tangled vine is unlikely to produce a particularly tasty crop of fruit. Most of its energy is going into growing and climbing. A grape grower needs to control the vine in order to make it concentrate more energy into ripening its grapes. In theory, anyone can go and buy a few vines and start cultivating a miniature vineyard. I mean, it's no different from shopping at a garden center and you can just pick the variety you want. But you can't simply plant the seeds of your chosen variety, for example, Chardonnay. You have to buy a cutting from an existing Chardonnay vine. If you do, you'll notice a joined part way along the plant. This is the graft, where a European variety has been joined with an American rootstock. The grafting together of two plants was originally introduced to combat a nasty little pest called Phylloxera, which destroyed many of Europe's vineyards in the late 1800s. And it still lives in soils throughout the world. American vine species are resistant to Phylloxera, but the fruit of the European vine is considered to be of better quality for winemaking. So for this reason, in the majority of the world's vineyards, an American vine provides the roots, while a European vine produces the grapes. Once the vine is planted, it takes a few years before it will give the grower a good crop of fruit. As vines are natural climbers, they need support to grow upright. In the vineyard, this support system is called a trellis. Grape growers will carefully prune the vine into a shape that allows them easy access to the fruit, maximizes the ripening of the grapes, and provides the vine with the right conditions to thrive. Vines are actually not the most demanding of plants. They can tolerate quite extreme conditions that other fruiting plants cannot. They've been known to produce fantastic grapes when they have very little access to water or nutrients. For example, in the Moselle region in Germany, the best vineyards are found on very steep slopes with slate soils right next to the river. While it might be tough for the grape grower to work there, the vines don't seem to mind. In Chateau Neuf de Pape in France, they grow wonderful grapes in vineyards there which are covered in large stones known as galettes, where very little else will grow. The vine is one of nature's true survivors. Along with a little help from us humans, all that it needs to thrive is sunshine, warmth, a little water, and nutrients in the soil. It is easy to see why this miraculous plant has been such a popular crop for thousands of years. We hope you enjoyed this three minute wine school. Visit wsctglobal.com to find out more about taking a WSCT course.